Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today was day two, final wrap up for the Medical Equipment Right to Repair Summit. And um, it was an interesting, interesting event. We learned a lot of stuff and we got our marching orders today for going forward and I can't really share what those plans are, but what I can do is I can ask you guys for your help because this is something that I really need from you guys and all of your vast experience. So let's see, I've got some notes here and I will see what I can cover for you guys. <clears throat> okay, so some of the notes that I have here is that some of the data from the last couple years uh, has been skewed because of COVID and that does not add to our favor. So even though COVID might have made a lot of our purpose more in the public spectrum, it has not helped us because a lot of the data is skewed and we know this. Um, I learned a lot more about consumable tracking and disabling. That's an interesting topic all on its own for another video, how uh, OEM vendors have been implying uh, chips that they can deactivate uh, or they have timers and countdowns and those deactivate the item even though the item is perfectly fine. That's a whole other video guys. Um, one of the other things I've learned from this is that some vendors are getting 15 day part holds when they order. So these are high high dollar parts and what they're doing is if a third party vendor orders from an OEM, the OEM has a 15 day hold before they'll ship versus if the hospital orders, the part will immediately ship. So usually what happens is a third party has the hospital buy the part and then have it shipped straight to the hospital. And then the OEM vendor or the uh, third party vendor goes and installs it. So that's a scandalous behavior, right? Um, there is some non-competes and some companies are being ho held hostage because of their contracts. Now that's an interesting topic. Um, I have had other companies tell me how they're being held hostage based on their OEM contracts. You know, if you're going to be an official supplier of certain parts that uh, you're being held hostage and you're limited on what other type of jobs that you can take on because of that prior contract that you signed with an OEM in order to be an official vendor. So that's an interesting one. Um, let's see. One of the things that I've learned is that training and parts do not depend on the modality, but on the OEM. Now this one's kind of a uh, given, we've all kind of known that, but uh, one OEM, let's say GE, um, they might produce an item, but if another vendor produces that exact same item with the exact same amount of risk, then the other vendor might choose not to publicly support it for third parties and and you know companies like GE do so if it was all risk based I would understand it but when one vendor allows a company uh, because of the amount of business they do with them to do third-party training but then they don't let other companies do third-party training it spells a problem that means a lot of the arguments are BS that they're putting out there about competency and the inability to track the quality of repairs, yada, yada, yada. It's, it's all garbage. Um, let's see, what else do we have? There is inconsistent support from party to party. Um, well, one of the, the inconsistencies I can tell you right now is you guys all know that if you are a hospital biomed, um, you can order many parts Whereas a third party repair like myself, they will not sell to me, will not sell at all. So usually what we have to do is we have to have the hospital call and order the parts and then uh, we will show up on site, you know, just as I explained earlier, and then we will repair it with the hospital buying the parts. Again, that's a burden on the hospital and it's a burden on us because it takes us out of the loop on things like back order on the parts. Uh, cause if we don't get a reply saying that it's been shipped, then we will call the uh, OEM and 
you know, harass them about, hey, why haven't you shipped my parts yet? But if the hospital does the ordering, we don't have the RMA number, we don't have the PO number, we're out of the loop. So that that does suck. It sucks for us and it sucks for the hospitals. Um, here's, a, here's a pretty pretty big one. The quality of repair does not depend on the company. All right, That's, this is a huge misconception, guys. The quality of the repair or the service depends completely on the individual, on the technician themselves. So you, you could supply somebody with the best training in the world, and if they are a lazy technician and they, and they cut shortcuts, if they cut corners, they're going to do a really bad PM. And we have seen it from every type of vendor that exists. So I've seen it from OEMs. I have photographic evidence of that and video evidence of OEMs cutting corners, all right? And uh, just the same as I know some third parties that have cut corners, and that's not right. I've seen it with blenders, how how some uh, third parties won't even replace all the parts. How, what garbage is that? So uh, I just want to reiterate that for you guys. The quality of the repair depends on the individual technician not the OEM or the private company. Completely on the individual. So that throws out a lot of arguments about competency because I know some people that are OEM trained and they're not competent at all. Just the same as I know some third parties that even if they were trained to the level of OEM, they would never be competent because it's the individual. All right, so some of the other things that I've uh, learned on this, this little... Uh, voyage um, certifications often stop with the employment there's one very large laser company out there that was infamous for this you are certified to work on X laser but as soon as you leave the company you are no longer considered certified what garbage is that if the software revision and the hardware revision haven't changed you should be still certified now, there's, there's certain things like that that I wish the FDA would rein in on, but they're not going to. That's one of the other things that I have been learning, is that the FDA does not want to regulate medical repair. Now, it is completely justified if you guys want to sit back and say, what the hell do they do then? They don't want to regulate medical equipment, so what do we have an FDA for? We have an FDA so that there can be an FDA. That's it. That's government in a nutshell, right? So, um, cybersecurity. You guys know about cybersecurity. That's a that's a hot topic, and I can talk about that all day long. FDA does not want to touch on cybersecurity. It doesn't. And here is the big issue about cybersecurity: is what level is up to the OEM, and what level is up to the owner of the equipment. See, now the OEMs like to throw their hands up and say, oh, no, 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 no. The operating system, that's you guys. We are just the software on the device, the control software, not the OS. But here's the problem. The OS sometimes will not work with different versions of software. Visual Basic libraries are, are one of those examples. Like, if you don't, if you don't run the, the VB library on the correct version of the OS, you will get crashes and the crashes are not welcome in medical equipment so guys it's, it's just one of those things where the operating system should always be tested with a specific software that runs on it they're tested together they you don't just patch the OS at your at your free will while your control software sitting on there because a you will get a system that either crashes more often or B doesn't boot at all I mean everybody should know that when you upgrade software, you always take the potential that your device is going to quit working or behave erratically. That's just, just the nature of software. It's always been that way. So why would we ever have the owner of the equipment be responsible for the operating system, but here the OEM is responsible just for the control software? No, they're patched together. They should always be patched together. So guys, um, that is an argument that is that is pending, is what's going on with the um, FDA and cybersecurity. It's hard to say. So another topic that I can I can talk at uh, with these 
is uh, remanufacturing and what constitutes remanufacturing. And it's one of those things that gets really, really sketchy because remanufacturing, by the general common knowledge of the term remanufacturing, means that you are remaking or repurposing a device. And the, what they're going to do is they're trying to redefine what remanufacturing is. And there, there's a big problem with that because that's a slippery slope. I mean, there are many industrial items out there, safety gear, etc., that you could technically consider remanufactured if you use it in any manner other than what's dictated in a, in a single post-it note. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a really slippery slope. So remanufacturing, um, as far as I know, the FDA has not touched on that. And right now, one of the things that they want to do is they want, if I'm correct on this, please correct me if I'm wrong. But, you know, we have ISOs, independent service organizations. We have HDOs, which are hospital, whatever, whatever you want to call them. Uh, let's call them in-house biomed programs. And then you have OEM. So you have those three. Well, what they want to do is they want to um, take a lot of power away from the argument for right to repair by saying, oh, uh, HDOs and OEMs are exempt. Because if the hospitals aren't fighting for the right to repair, then all they're doing is leaving third parties, ISOs, to stand alone. See, ISOs, third party, me, many of you that are watching this, we are powerful because hospitals depend on us. We have a local relationship with those hospitals. And because of that, we have a lot of power and usually a lot of pull when it comes to the future of a biomed program in a certain region. But, and guys, they want to redefine things. They want to slide around terminology. They want to grant exemptions. What garbage is that? Complete garbage, guys. And it, all it is is to take the wind out of the sails of right to repair. That's pretty much what they're trying to do. So um, there are some other things I can't talk about. But here's where I need your help, guys. In the description below this video, I'm going to leave a form where you can please Go and fill out the form if you have any incidents that you want me to report to the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC. And the reason being is because they are now directed by executive order to investigate. So I have been told many stories by you guys. So I decided to create a form where you can put in some of your info, describe the situation, and then upload photographic or video proof. Sound good? Guys, I'm going to be leaving this link in the bottom of lots of my videos because this is really important. Please fill out the form, tell me what's been going on, and I'm going to package up all these complaints and I'm going to ship it off to the FTC and some of these manufacturers that have been giving a lot of you guys a hard time for a while, we're going to fix that. Straight up. So go ahead and check it out. It's the uh, medical right to repair reporting form. The important part of this is that I'm asking you guys to include photographs. So if you have OEM vendors that are doing subpar performance, if they're leaving your equipment a mess, if they're not repairing things correctly, record a short little video on it. Say like, hey, it's still broke or, you know, hey, uh, OEM just touched it and it caught fire. I've been told all sorts of stories about you guys. And here's your chance to have a voice. Okay, so in the description below is going to be a link for that form. Use it at your leisure as a regular reporting tool, and I'm going to be sharing that information directly with the U.S. federal government. All right, guys, I took up enough of your time. Thank you all for watching, and please look in the description below and use the link for the form. Thanks.